So what are these playgrounds for entrepreneurs right now? The first one is automation, uh, aka artificial intelligence. Um, Kevin Kelly, the founding editor of Wired said, you know, the next wave of startup is just gonna be take anything and add artificial intelligence. There's gonna be a lot of applications. Uh, smart devices and services are going to appear. It's a huge opportunity. This is the kind of devices we have today. This is a robot that is deployed in hundreds of hospitals in the US that delivers medicine and food to the patients. This is you know, drone delivery, you guys have seen that. Uh, Google is working on a serious project for that. Uh, Amazon is working on a project for that. The Swiss Post is working on a project for that. Huge opportunity in automating stuff. Of course, the army is getting involved. This is what the Russians have said they would deploy on their bases. And there is better than that. It's automated police, which Dubai is uh, pretending to deploy by 2017 um, in their streets. Of course, this is gonna fail miserably, but it's good buzz. Uh, for the media, uh, but you have to think that a lot of jobs, you know, when I was a kid, I could hear my parents speak about how jobs, factory worker jobs were being replaced by machines. Now what's happening is that the white collar jobs are being replaced by machines. As you can see with journalists, this is during the last elections in France, there were robot uh, writers uh, that wrote 22,000 articles about the French elections. Uh, automatically, you have the health coach that is an artificial intelligence, a great app called Lark. If you don't have it, just go get it. Uh, basically, it has the data from your phone and it looks at how much you slept, how many steps you took, and it gives you a health recommendation. Uh, you, can you can get automated fashion styles, um, etc. So the point here is try to think of tasks that are around you and how you can automate them. And I believe that's a huge opportunity. Um, of course, a lot of challenges and challenges are opportunities because if you can solve these problems, you can probably build a business. Uh, you know, computers are very stupid. Um, this is what happened with Google Photos that uh, basically Basically, there were uh, pictures of black people that the artificial intelligence categorized as um, uh, gorillas, uh, which is you know, not very sensitive. Um, so computers are very stupid. Uh, robots kill workers. Uh, robots attack people. This is my favorite news of the year. It's this Korean woman who was sleeping on the floor, and she had a Roomba, and the Roomba came into her hair and got tangled, and she had to call the, 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 the medics to untangle the robot from her. So you know, there's a lot of things that you can do about making computers smarter and solving these kind of issues and I believe these are very nice businesses to um, be built. Security and privacy, lots of stuff going on in that field again. Um, you know, securing devices uh, and data around us. I don't know if you saw this article from last week in Wired. Basically, these new cars that are super fancy, you can hack into them. And so this is what happens when you're in your new Jeep and uh, hackers get into the car. They can just like steer it and uh, change the brakes and the acceleration and basically kill you. Uh, so, you know, uh, these little dongles that your insurance company wants to put into your car to monitor how you drive, they can also be hacked and potentially two million cars can be hacked right now in the US um, for really uh, serious harm. Um, you, ca you start to see companies shutting down entirely because their computer systems do not work. This happened twice to United in the past three weeks. Uh, you start to see crime moving online. This is fascinating news. It's a baseball team in the US that hacked into their competitors' systems to, stole, to steal the uh, scouting reports and all the data they had. So crime is moving online. Um, there's a lot of stuff and a lot of opportunities around securing device, uh, securing data, and also privacy, obviously, is a huge uh, business opportunity. I believe a lot of very interesting uh, initiatives to build some for profit, some not for profit, but a lot of room for that. Uh, obviously, you've heard about this um, dating website, um, you know, Ashley Madison. It's very strange they didn't choose a French name for that brand. Uh, but um, Ashley Madison is uh, basically uh, a website for people who, who want to cheat on their partner and they just get hacked. 37 million people are potentially exposed. So you start to see a lot of reaction. Apple saying, we don't see your data. This is none of our business. We make money from hardware. Okay, can you believe them? This is another story. Uh, but you have a lot of uh, companies starting in that field. Trackbuster, for example, very recent company launched a couple of weeks ago. What they do is that they look at your email and they remove all the trackers that are in them. Uh, WhatsApp that kind of encrypted their messages if you're on Android starting last year, um, Silent Phone, which is a Swiss company, uh, actually a company incorporated in Switzerland that wants to secure uh, the phone market. So huge potential in that area. And by the way, there is not only technological solution. There's a lot of offline solutions that are very interesting regarding privacy. This is one of my favorites. It's basically a jacket that if somebody 
takes a picture of you and there's a flash, it's going to take you out of the picture because the, the clothes is going to gather all the, the light. And there's also this uh, very interesting privacy device. I don't know if you've seen it, but it's pretty amazing, very basic. And uh, of course, there is the mobile version um, if you have a mobile. It's an uh, amazing artist doing that. So anyway, uh, securing privacy, uh, very big opportunity for entrepreneurs. Food, a lot of very interesting things about food, new products, um, Soylent, which is basically uh, a drink that you can leave on. It's like synthesized uh, food, not synthesized, but it's like a combination of food. And when you drink Soylent, you don't need anything else. You have all the vitamins, you have everything that your body needs in one drink. Uh, there's a company coming up with artificial milk to be deployed next year. There's artificial eggs, uh, Clara Food, amazing stuff. You know, eggs are now more expensive than chicken uh, in the US. So they're coming with synthetic white egg. There is um, reproduction of meat from vegetable, very interesting stuff, uh, also coming from the US, uh, in vitro meat that um, was mentioned before. But what you might not know is that there's the first international symposium on cultured meat uh, coming in October in Maastricht, if you're very interested. This is really a conference I want to go to. Um, but uh, there is actually a restaurant that opened with in vitro meat now in Amsterdam. So a lot of new products. And again, uh, rethinking food under these new constraints that we have, that the soil is very limited that uh, we need to make food more, food more efficient. And there's also a lot of new processes for building food. So 3D printing food is one, but there is a lot of projects around farming. So this is uh, how to farm strawberries underwater. A very interesting project from Italy. This is uh, the urban farming uh, from Philips. Um, and this is basically That's also from, a not a production perspective, but from a consumption perspective. This is the robot that is going to uh, put all the three stars chef uh, out of work apparently because it's able to kind of copy the recipes and uh, reproduce them. So a lot of new processes around food that also I think are very interesting opportunities. Health is a major industry coming from Switzerland. We have a lot of, um, of that. Uh, a lot of new possibilities that are kind of uh, maddening. So CRISPR, if you haven't heard of that, is this new technology that allows us to edit genes. So you take uh, cells out of somebody's body, you edit them and you put them back. And that's kind of the only way that we can actually cure for real certain diseases. And so HIV was successfully deleted uh, from somebody's cells a couple of weeks ago. Uh, you start to have drugs for living longer. The first one is going to go on sale uh, next year. Uh, and then this is what 3D printing is going to do for drugs. So we're starting to see the day now where digital pharma is booting up. We're just with a laptop and some of the tools that are becoming available, you can actually make powerful drugs that on once only drug companies could do at incredibly low cost. I think in the next two to three years, I should be able to make a virus for about a dollar. So what he calls a virus is basically anything that has DNA. You send it to some kind of device that's going to print that um, organism. And you can take this idea a bit further and start to think that basically the barrier to entry to be a pharma company is going to go down, uh, just like the barrier to entry in the music industry went down with um, uh, the digital technologies. So there is a lot of new possibilities uh, appearing in the health sector, probably one of the most uh, exciting sector there is uh, in Europe. Um, you also have um, a lot of human and machine collaboration happening. Okay. So now you start to have projects where um, uh, Watson, the artificial intelligence from IBM, is used to diagnose diseases. And so um, if a doctor had to read all the medical research that's coming out in the world, they would need like 160 hours a day. So it's not possible for a doctor to follow all the research. It's possible for a computer. So Watson is going to be here to advise the doctor, and the doctor is going to make the call. I think that on a lot of things, the future is a combination of artificial intelligence and a human. But there are some really amazing projects happening. This is real. This is reported by The Economist, right? It's actually the virtual, the, the artificial intelligence-based shrink. So um, it's an artificial intelligence, just like you can talk to Siri you talk to an artificial intelligence which happens to be a psychologist and uh, it's a very serious project it's been tested not, um, most notably on soldiers and it's very successful with soldiers because soldiers have a very hard time admitting um, about their post-traumatic uh, syndrome for example because in front of them is a human person that they think is going to judge them um, so when they talk to a computer uh, the research found that the soldiers were actually better treated
created then uh, by a human. Um, you have projects like Sensely, which is a virtual nurse, so the patients can talk to a nurse, say what they have, and the nurse is going to direct them to the relevant doctor. So these are the, comp the, the technologies that you know will do level one of support when somebody calls a hospital or somebody Skypes a hospital and has an issue. They're going to talk to an artificial intelligence that then is going to direct them to a human um, uh, person for the real care. So there's a lot of things about human machine collaboration in, in health coming out. There's a lot of things about robots. Um, this is the V-Bot. The V-Bot is basically what's going to replace one of the nurses' worst ni nightmare, which is drawing blood from people. You know, it's a very inefficient uh, process. And by the way, if you already had a nurse in training like me drawing blood from you, like you really wish this robot would exist. Um, because basically it can see inside your arm and it's going to get the blood and uh, it's going to free the nurses from this very repetitive and low added value tasks. So that's the VBOT that's actually uh, available. And there is a lot of things also around exoskeletons and bringing um, you know, disabled people uh, on their feet. So a lot of things about robots. And the last one is about sensors. I think there's a huge opportunity about capturing data, capturing health data from people. Uh, this is a project called Proper Health. What it is, is it's an inhaler. And you know, for people who have respi uh, respiratory disease, it happens to be connected to um, a network. And so when somebody's using the inhaler, it sends the data back to a server that is able to kind of map where the inhaler has been used, and so it can give other patients a map of where they should not go into a city because perhaps there is uh, some allergens or the, the air quality is really bad. So it's very interesting when you start connecting these health objects to the network. Uh, this is a project from Baidu. You know, China has some issues with the quality of the food. Uh, you have, uh, I saw yesterday there is a, uh, somebody went to, um, got into trouble because they were putting Viagra into their liquor. Um, so this is what happens uh, on this market. So basically uh, what they do is that they have smart chopsticks. Uh, it's Baidu working on it. Uh, Baidu is the Chinese Google. It's, it's, not a, it's not a small startup. So when you put the chopsticks into the food, basically you kind of see what's uh, composing the food. And also one of my favorite projects come from Singapore. Uh, you know, Singapore has very strict drunk driving laws. So there's this nightclub. What they did is that they put a sensor in the toilets and so when you go into the toilets and you pee on the sensor the sensor is reading how much alcohol you have in your blood and if you have too much alcohol it sends an alert to the door guy and it says don't give him his car keys back and so if you're drunk the toilets report you to the the doorman it's very interesting usage of sensors so big opportunity around sensors um, the last thing i want to talk about is sustainable development we have this huge challenge uh, you know i have three kids um, uh, it's it's a huge challenge that we need to address uh, technology can do a lot for sustainable development uh, there are some studies that says with automated car we can get rid of the need for parking we can get rid of 90 percent of cars that are on street so huge opportunity there um, tech drones being used to replant the forest this is a startup that wants to plant one billion tree uh, through drones a lot of things around energy harvesting energy uh, this is a Swiss project called twin power uh, what they do is that they have a drone it's not really a drone but they have a, some kind of autonomous um, a plane that you know goes into the uh, 300 meters above the surface and generates electricity by its movements uh, you have people working on getting um, uh, power from uh, the tidal um, the tides in the in the sea and uh, one of my favorite projects you also have uh, some scientists very serious scientists working on um, gathering uh, gas from cows um, and turn it into uh, energy apparently uh, there is huge uh, business potential in that technology so um, this um, are basically five things that um, if you're an entrepreneur, I encourage you to look at um, automation, artificial intelligence, security, privacy, uh, the food, um, health, sustainable development. These are very important fields. And remember that um, it's this digital revolution has changed a lot of things, but it's probably just starting in a lot of industries. Uh, this was in the latest um, Kleiner Perkins Internet Trends report. If you uh, see that, uh, it comes out every year. And so you see education is, according to them, one quarter into its uh, revolution. Uh, healthcare is also one quarter. So we have a lot of things coming ahead of us. This is another view of the same um, uh, problem. This is from Bain, the large consulting company. Um, you know, they listed all the industries. And in dark gray, you see the change that has already happened. In light gray, the change that is upcoming 
coming. And you see industries like uh, healthcare, um, education, hotels, uh, insurance, logistics, consumer products, manufacturing. Most of the changes are w ahead of us. So huge opportunity in front of you guys. And um, thank you very much for your attention, for having me. I'm going to be here if you have questions. And I wish you a great um, evening. Thank you.